I'm here today with Jose Plen, who, uh, in addition to teaching at the Haas School of Business and running our Center for Financial Reporting, uh, is an entrepreneur with a company called uh, Powerlytics. Welcome, Jose. Jose is an academic economist, someone who teaches accounting. Um, I think at some point you observed that the uh, types of data that the people and companies are using for important financial decisions is, is very limited. Um, tell us how you uh, came to that realization and, and what you decided to do about it. Sure. So I worked for a number of years with uh, primarily sort of three U.S. government agencies, the IRS, the Census Bureau, and the Department of Labor. And uh, I started off working on kind of typical academic research projects and slowly but surely realized that uh, while a number of these data sets are kind of readily available and a number of people use them for research and commercial purposes, uh, they're still kind of very hard, very hard to use, and uh, especially uh, there's a non-trivial amount of work that goes into translating that data into something that's actionable and meaningful for uh, you know, a large enterprise, especially one in financial services. And uh, so uh, it took me a, a number of years to realize that it wasn't kind of a, a quick aha moment. Um, and uh, that's when the kind of entrepreneurial spirit kicked in and I saw an opportunity. I think you were, you were saying to me earlier that uh, a lot of companies, especially when they're doing valuation, uh, limit the, the data that they use to publicly available, publicly traded corporations. Uh, you know, why, is that, why is that a problem? Sure. So um, there are about 5,000 active publicly traded companies in the U.S., uh, but there are about 27 million companies in total in the U.S. Uh, so the vast majority of companies are private. The vast majority of companies are small or somewhat mid-size. And so what that means is that most M&A activity uh, involves small and mid-sized companies. And the, the traditional method to uh, do a sort of M&A valuation type uh, uh, assessments was to look at public company comparables. And uh, the problem is public companies are outliers. They're kind of a, you know, the most successful companies uh, that we have. And most companies are just not like them. So it's, um, uh, that's where I, uh, I saw the need or we saw the need uh, to uh, uh, allow this uh, database of tax returns of businesses, uh, which encompasses the whole U.S. economy, uh, to be used for this purpose. So that now the group against which you are being compared is not you know, just the Googles and Microsofts of the world, but rather companies of your size in your neck of the woods in your industry. Now, I think a lot of people would be surprised to, to know that so much of this data is publicly available. I think most people understand that the census data is available, but uh, the IRS data, uh, to what extent is that data readily available to anyone who wants to use it? Sure, so the ingredients of what we use are generally readily available. Some uh, uh, can be easily downloaded from a website. Some require some work in terms of setting up an agreement with the IRS. But these agencies don't grant exclusives to anybody about anything. So uh, theoretically, everything is indeed readily available. Um, however, while these ingredients are readily accessible, kind of a, the secret sauce of a hard work is in the recipe of how to integrate all these uh, in, a, in a meaningful and economically accurate and statistically accurate way in such a way that uh, the data is actually uh, usable. Okay, so in other words, a lot of companies like yours will take readily available, publicly available information and they will process it and combine it using algorithms to provide some output which companies can then use for decision making? Exactly, yes. and. Um, uh, we provide um, sort of raw data to clients, uh, which are sort of these large CSV files and or via API. But we also have a number of visualizations of the data, which um, are very often much more meaningful. So um, we have a lot of software that we've uh, developed in-house using uh, sort of traditional technologies and, uh, and a business intelligence platform, which uh, allows one to uh, sort of visualize the financial health of different metropolitan areas, for example across the U.S. or uh, look at a um, uh, 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 zero in on Chicago, say, and get a feel of which neighborhoods in Chicago are rich or which are poor or which have, uh, uh, you know, uh, favorable financial trends and which have unfavorable financial trends. You know, a lot of financial institutions and large enterprises uh, believe that they can use all, you make base their decisions almost entirely on their internally generated data and their internal algorithms. 
Uh, under what circumstances does it make sense for a large enterprise to, to go outside of their own data set and their own analysts to go to a company like yours uh, to, uh, to access uh, valuable information? Hmm, great question. So perhaps one of our greatest um, features is the fact that we have 100% coverage. We have complete coverage of the entire U.S. economy, and no one else does. You know, so we have complete coverage of all businesses in the U.S. and complete coverage of all households in the U.S., uh, all, all this information coming from their tax returns. And, this, uh, and the tax return is a federal filing, so it's heavily standardized and heavily regulated and overseen. So the quality standard tends to be very, very high. So even if you are a huge bank, uh, which has a, a broad spectrum of a population, you will still want to know what's going on in, with the entire population. So we have found that uh, all financial institutions, generally speaking, beyond a certain size, they want to know uh, what's really going on in this particular market. What share of that market do I really have? Are my customers typical? Are they outliers? And where, are, where else can I find customers like my best customers? Well, thank you, Jose. Thank you very much, Greg, for having me.